Before I get overexcited and say anything nice about iPadOS 26, let me be clear. Apple had to really work for this one. If you've been around here for a while, you already know that I haven't exactly been subtle about my frustration with the iPad so far. Amazing hardware and great for artists, but felt like something was missing for the last four or five years. I think iPadOS 17 was probably the moment I was hoping that something serious was gonna happen to the iPad. Instead, at the time we got Stage Manager, which honestly felt more like a beta test than any productivity tool. And eight months ago, I said that it feels like Apple's just like tweaking the edges rather than addressing the real issue for me, you know, which is the iPad Pro hardware is over for what it delivers. For many years, it's like Apple had all these brilliant puzzle pieces, the Mac, the iPhone, the iCloud, AirDrop, all of that stuff, but just refused to finish the picture on the iPad. And now with iPadOS 26, suddenly we're seeing better fluidity when using multiple apps, proper multitasking, which is like, you know, finally. And it makes me wonder actually, maybe someone at Apple's been watching my video. If so, hi there, <laughs> thanks for listening. Just kidding. And just to be clear, this video is about the beta version of iPadOS 26. So a few things might still be you know, not finished, and they might still change before the final release. I just gotta put it out there in case their lawyers are listening as well. But overall, listen, this feels like a solid preview of what's to come. Coming from a primarily Android user these days, credit where it's due, iPadOS 26 is unlike any previous betas that I've tried in the last few years. And just so you know, this video isn't one of those, let's just list all the features and call it a day. But I've also carved out some time here to respond to your comments in my previous iPad videos, definitely stick around for that. And thanks so much for always interacting with me here because your comments make these videos more interesting for me to create them, but hopefully for you to watch them as well. But before we go back in time, let's fast forward to now, 2025. I've just been testing this iPadOS 26 beta on the M4 iPad Pro and honestly, definitely stable. And the key thing for me is, it's not just flashy like the iOS is trying to be, it just works better, you know, like the software is finally catching up to the amazing hardware that we've got here. But let's talk about what's new, what's actually useful, and whether this is finally the iPadOS update that we've been waiting for. The first thing you notice is how smooth the, the whole system feels now. Animations, not that they were a problem before, but they are tighter. Widgets feel snappier, and the new file system, which is for me one of the big things here, is actually useful now. For me, it's the new windowing system that, if you can call it that, that is truly making everything here just feel like a like a real desktop class experience. And yet, the new liquid glass look, I'm not gonna skip that. I'm not a great fan of it on the iPhone. I do think there's a lot of work to be done there, but on the iPad, it's more subtle. It's not something you can get away from, it's everywhere, but it looks great. You can change it yourself, you know, from the lock screen to the multitasking windows. The whole thing looks like it was built as one cohesive experience. When you look closely, there's some details in here that do look great and they feel great as you're using it as well. It's like you're moving, you know, panes of glass or frosted glass sliding over each other. Honestly, it's the first time that the iPad has felt visually this refined. But it's not over dramatic or screaming at you, it's just quietly better and more importantly, and this is the key thing for me here, it's more functional. And that's exactly what I think iPadOS needed. And when you compare this experience with Android tablets now, this is where Apple could do some damage, you know? Because up until now, it's been all about, for me anyway, just looks. The iPad OS felt great and it looked great, but it wasn't useful. You know, it was like, oh, I wanna do more with this, you know? And I kept going back to my trusty Tab S9, Tab S10, Tab S8, all the Tab S uh, Galaxy, because I could just do more with it. That's just me, and I know from a creative perspective, the iPad is, unbeatable really, but that was not because of the iPad. That was because of the apps, right? Some apps are only available on iPadOS, like Procreate, um, Ulysses even for writing. And talking about that, Apple intelligence, I have a lot to say about that from a, not from a failure perspective, but from a functionality perspective, but I won't touch too much on that today because yeah, I've said enough. Let's leave it for another video. And whether you're taking notes, sketching, or using creative apps like Freeform or Procreate, or like me, you know, doing some architecture work, there's 
just something about the feel of pen on paper that makes a big difference when you're using the pencil. And that's what Paperlike brings to the iPad. It adds this texture surface that gives you not just the natural control feeling of writing on paper, but there's a lot more benefits to it. I do a fair bit of technical drawing for, for work, not full on architectural plans, I'm not <laughs> nothing like that, but enough that I need accuracy. I mostly use notability and concept, but it's so true, these apps work much better for me when the pencil isn't just skating across the glass, you know? Paperlike is hands down the first accessory that I get whenever I buy a new iPad, the Mini, the Air, the Pro, you name it. I've had Paperlike on it like first few days. And as I mentioned, it's not just about the friction. There are two extra perks. One, fewer fingerprints, and two, way less reflection. Yes, you can go for a super expensive nano texture option, but man, it's a lot of money. It's a tough sell for me when we can get something this good. And when it comes to precision, paper like really shines. My drawings might not win any like creativity awards, but they do at least look good, look clean and intentional. And my hand drawing, well, somehow I can read it. <laughs> it's the kind of subtle improvement that makes you wonder how you ever used an iPad without it. And the trick here is in the nano dots technology that Paperlike has, just the right amount of friction, enough to feel natural, but not so much that it wears down your pencil tip. That's key as well. And here's the kicker, Paperlike trusts their product so much that they give you a 100 day satisfaction guarantee. If you mess up the installation or it's just not for you, they will sort it, refund or replacement. They've also got some extra accessories worth checking out. I love their drawing glove. So whether you're an artist, a student, or someone who just likes a cleaner screen, a better writing feel, and you wanna keep, kind of look after your display as well for when you sell it on, Paperlike is 100% worth checking out. Use the link in the description or scan the QR code here on the screen, maybe here. And thanks again, Paperlike, for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. Right, stage manager, to say that we've had a complicated relationship, it's an understatement. But I will give Apple this. You can now resize windows, move things around, and crucially, it feels like you've got the freedom yourself. It's not like, you know, the stage manager that pretended to give you the freedom and then when you placed it and it's like, oh, <laughs> I don't want it that size or I don't want it there. You know, it's letting you make the decision. It's really, even apps that I didn't expect to work are working even now on, on the beta. It's pretty impressive. Of course, you can hook it up to a monitor. You could before, but for the first time, I find myself wanting to use it by choice, not just for testing for these videos. And here's the subtle thing that I noticed. It doesn't feel like my expensive display is being wasted, like Stage Manager was doing, right? You wasted space. Now I can fully utilize the space and some. You know, I can put stuff on top. It's literally <laughs> like a Windows desktop or something. It's awesome. And something else that is working amazingly well, again, finally, is file management. It feels usable, <laughs> you know, it's as simple as that. This matters because when you look at what Samsung has done, for example, with Dex, it's clear that for many years, right, there's an appetite here. You know, if Samsung was to get rid of Dex, people will be going up and up. I'll be one of them, <laughs> like going crazy. Like it's a proper desktop style workflows for tablets. There are some limitations, but Man, when I'm like commuting or wanting to do a bit of work on the side, it needs some sort of Windows access that I can't use my Mac for. It's awesome. So I'm really glad to see some of that experience here on the iPad. Moving folders around, having this Mac OS sort of dock experience is great as well. You can drag folders in and out and customize the folder looks as well with emojis, even if you want to, different colors. For me, running multiple apps, not just like a side-by-side -side fakey little way, is the kind of flexibility that Samsung has leaned into for years and Apple has taken the time to get there. But finally, with iPadOS 26, it feels like we're starting to see something meaningful here. There's something else that I think you know, they could have gone that extra bit, but I'll get to that in a moment. Lots of you have also mentioned wanting things like Terminal, Xcode, or even full preview features. And yeah, I agree. You know, the hardware is more than capable. It's about time, I think, that the software could happen. I'm happy with this direction. Now, performance and battery, very smooth so far. The battery hasn't had any noticeable hit as, as a result of iPadOS 26, which can happen in, in some beta versions, especially, you know, early days. I haven't tried this on other iPad models yet, but I'm cautiously optimistic that none of these changes seem to be resource intensive. Now I said I'd come back to some of your comments and here we are. I tried to kind of group them by sort of some sort of theme. A lot of you, for example, said that you don't want a macOS on the iPad. You just want macOS level apps. 
And I totally agree, you know, give us full featured Final Cut <laughs> for, for me, selfishly, I'll be happy with that because at the moment, you know, Final Cut, and I think it's the same with uh, Logic Pro, give us support for third-party plugins, give us something like Terminal, like lots of you asked for that as well. I don't think Mac OS would work on the iPad that well. Get a Mac if you want that, right? But I'd also add that Apple should leverage the Mac a bit better. This is the bit that I said that I was gonna mention. I've been saying this for a while. I'd love, I don't, I don't think it's a massive jump to do this. I'd love if there was a way to truly work on the iPad and then seamlessly continue the work with some limitations, I'd be prepared to accept some limitations on the iPad. Just to be able to share a project between apps, between the Mac and the iPad to continue, continuity, continue working on them would be awesome. And I don't think is that that much of a stretch. Some of you also pointed out that the iPad should not become a Mac. And I totally agree with that too. You know, you love the iPad because it's light, portable, minimal. You want to use it as a, as a tablet. You know, that's, that's a fair point too. I think Apple has done that here. They kept the tablet aspect intact, but added features for people like me who want a desktop experience every now and then. There were some of you as well who were really frustrated, like me for many years, complaining about no multi-user support, still not there, weird mouse scrolling behavior as well, and this liquid glass aesthetic making the screen harder to see in bright light. I hear you on all of those points, and hopefully those issues will get addressed in future updates. I'll definitely keep you updated here. And I think the iPhone, honestly, has a lot of those issues too. And seems to me that that's where they, they, they should focus some of, the, some of the efforts because the iPad is, is in the right direction. Now, is it worth updating as soon as it comes out for public release? I'd say if you've got an M series iPad, absolutely is the safest bet. I feel quite comfortable in saying that because, you know, why, why wouldn't you? But if you're on something older, like the iPad 2018 one, you might not even be supported on that, right? You've got to be honest. But it's hard to say at the minute because, I don't know, it doesn't feel high intensive. It feels like it could work on, on the older iPads. But this is the first iPadOS update in years, if not ever. <laughs> that doesn't feel like a, a letdown. That alone makes it worth a look on whatever iPad. If you've been here a while, you know that I've called the iPad a disappointment more than once, and I was probably harsh, you know, in some, some viewers' uh, perceptions, but it feels strange even to say this, but iPad OS 26 is actually good. And if you're curious about how it all stacks up against Samsung DeX, you can bet that comparison is coming as well. I've been testing both side by side here, and let's just say that there are some areas where Samsung's is still years ahead, and others where Apple's finally caught up, if not overtaken DeX, which is scary to think. But if you're deciding between the two right now, make sure you subscribe for that one because um, it should be a, a bombshell. Are you testing this yet? Are you holding off? Or are you finally thinking of dusting off the iPad that you haven't touched in months? Your comments make these videos way more interesting and relevant, so I really appreciate it. See you soon. Cheers.